Did you know that you can grow stuff out of mushrooms? Well, not exactly mushrooms, but actually the root that is under every single mushroom known as mycelium. So if we look at this woodblock print of a mushroom, under every mushroom is this vast web of a network of mycelium that lives below ground that oftentimes we don't see. But we can actually grow it above ground in food that's kind of like what's in soil. So today what I have is actually some sort of waste. So it turns out that you can actually take things that we think of as waste and they can actually be food for mycelium to grow. So today I'm actually using cocoa bean husks. So if you like chocolate, every time you make a bar of chocolate, they come in beans, in these cocoa beans. And outside of each bean is a husk. And so when chocolatiers make chocolate, they don't need those husks and sometimes they can go to waste. The cocoa bean husk that we'll be using is from Dandelion Chocolate, a really amazing chocolatier in San Francisco, California. So what I did was I took those cocoa bean husks that were generously donated by, uh, by Dandelion Chocolate and I sterilized them. So I did this in the lab using a piece of equipment called an autoclave, but you could actually do it in your own home inside of a pressure cooker like an Instant Pot. And so what I have is I have sterilized cocoa bean husks with some water. So they've got a little bit of liquid, a little bit of um, something for the mycelium to drink. And then what I did was I actually took mycelium that um, came from a company that I was able to order online. This is Rishi mycelium. So if you really with Rishi, sometimes it's used in some medicines. It can be a really good uh, substrate. It can be really good at growing structures. Um, and I put it into those cocoa bean husks and I let it grow for a week. So you can see there's all of this white fuzzy stuff and that is the mycelium. I also was growing a little bit of oyster mycelium. So if you've ever had oyster mushrooms from the grocery store, um, it's actually, this is what grows underground and the mushrooms are just what comes up above ground that we can see. So I'll be using reishi and oyster mushroom mycelium to grow some sculptures. And the sculptures that I thought would be really fun would actually be food. So what these are, are these are plastic shapes of some different foods. This one happens to be a dumpling. I've got a ravioli here. I have a tamal. Basta. Thank you. Pierogi or pierog. <laughs> That's just one pierogi is actually a pierog. <laughs> um, that I will be putting this mycelium into and growing them into these fun shapes. So let's do it. I just put my gloves on and the first step is to sterilize the environment that you're in. So what I have here is 70% ethanol. So ethanol is an alcohol. So this can be used to actually kill microbes. These mycelium are microbes. And so we use microbes all around us. There's bacteria and yeast and other fungi. Well, we don't want those fungi or those yeast or those bacteria to grow when we're just trying to grow one type of mycelium. Ethanol actually dries really quickly, so should be good. I'm also gonna get some ethanol here on my gloves to make sure that my entire work area and my hands are sterilized. And I'm gonna choose one shape. So I'm gonna do the dumpling first, because I love dumplings. I'm gonna take the reishi mycelium and I'm gonna press it inside of this mold form. And then I'm gonna put it inside of a plastic bag. So while this is drying off, I'm gonna label my plastic bag with what is inside of here. So I'm gonna write reishi. And then I'm also gonna write my name, just so if anyone finds this, they know who to track down. My initials are CRC. And then I'm also gonna put today's date so I know the first day that it started growing. So 2020. Okay. Ethanol dries nice and quickly. So the inside of this shape is more or less dry now. So I'm gonna open up the jar. Ooh, and you can see the mycelium growing so good. All that fuzzy stuff is mycelium. And I'm just gonna pick it up. Look at that. My gosh, it's so cool. And I'm gonna press it into the mold form. So you can see it's so fuzzy, it's actually been growing out from the cocoa bean husks that are in there. And so I'm gonna try to press it really good into as much of the mold form as I can. But if it doesn't get into every single tiny nook and cranny, the mycelium will actually grow out to fill it up. 
all the way up. I'm just pressing it in as much as possible. I'm looking to see if I've missed any cracks. Got some on the counter there. And now I've got my lid bag. I'm gonna go right in the bag because these are living, breathing organisms. We have to leave an air hole to make sure they can still breathe. So I'm not closing it all the way. I'm leaving a little bit of an air hole in the corner. And now this is ready to go into a nice, warm, and humid place. I like to grow these in my bathroom. Check back in on them in about a week and see how they grew. So it's been about two weeks and so they've grown pretty good. So here we go. This is a mycelium empanada. I actually took it out of its mold like maybe a week ago. So this was the mold shape. Here's the fungus uh, about a week ago. So we can get this nice fluffy mycelium growing all the way over because it needs air just like we do to breathe. Um, and now it's ready to go. So this is still growing, so we wanna deactivate it. So we're gonna deactivate it in an oven. I've got the oven set for between 120 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll bake this for about an hour. It depends a little bit on how big they are. This one's quite large, so it might take a little bit more than an hour. Um, and then we'll have a nice deactivated mycelium empanada. So we've taken these out of the oven, and as you can see, they've gotten a lot harder. Um, they even got a little bit toasted, and they have been deactivated. So these are ready for you to give to your friends, your family, anyone who might want a mycelium empanada. <laughs> but truly, uh, this is kind of a fun example, but you can make so many things out of mycelium. Imagine if the walls of your house were instead of made out of concrete or stone or actually grown out of mycelium. What if your favorite handbag was made out of mycelium? What if the coat that you were wearing was made out of mycelium? This is such an interesting biomaterial that we literally fed compost to and were able to grow into so many different things, even an empanada.